School strike movement began August 2018, when 15-year-old Greta Thunberg held a solo protest outside the Swedish Parliament. By February 2019, the UK-wide climate crisis strike saw thousands of school children and young people walk out of classes and greet the failure of politicians to make progress on the escalating ecological crisis. These protests have continued over lockdown in varying digital, creative and collaborative forms. This video essay interrogates the discourses of these school strikes visually as well as theoretically. It contends that the movements go beyond presenting a vision of an inescapable future or a simplistic request for adults to listen to science, as suggested by some critics. Instead, their vision is constructive of a better world as they challenge the failures of politicians and the adult public more generally. Young participants and organisers demand to play an active role in policy making when it comes to climate crisis, making specific claims and requests around democratic reform. Using activist pedagogies, the school strike movement increasingly centres the interconnection between racism, colonialism and the climate crisis. The school strike movement is constructed of critical utopian discourse expressed through complex temporalities which define the role of resistance as anticipation. Arguably, the movement has, even during the pandemic, proven to be self-reflexive and grounded in a broader discourse on politics, oppression and futurity. The anxiety in the student strike movement creates a non-violent but militant optimism, and the narratives of cathedral thinking are demonstrative of an open-ended utopian process. This is activists and academics we have much to learn from. The ethics of the school strike movement have grown from anxiety, and this anxiety continues to be a central part of the utopian temporality. Greta Thunberg's story began when she was thrown into depression and rendered speechless by the future. Accusing world leaders of being too relaxed in tackling the climate crisis, she said she wants them to panic. When your house is on fire, then that does require some level of panic, she said. Anxiety is also apparent to the banners and chants of the school students, and many student strikers speak of being motivated by fear for survival. The school strike movement it's not only a byproduct of power, where young people are pushed to the point of uprising because there is no alternative. This movement is something that itself makes change possible. The strikes continue to be a transformative politics where marches, assemblies and banner making sessions are critical spaces of engagement, gauging with a potential future. It is clear this alongside action on the climate Participants believe they have another responsibility to resolve the underlying issues that have led to the crisis. They believe that adults must no longer leave young people to be the voiceless future of humanity, but give them voting rights. There is a call to develop platforms and modes of policy engagement for young citizens, specifically ones that account for and tackle intersectional oppressions of race, class, and gender in their modes of operation. The statements of resistance made by school students on strike may seem negative on the surface. However, the very fact they are speaking out means they feel there is a possibility that change can happen. And their emphasis on the future shows an underlying assumption that positive change is an objective possibility given the right conditions. When they urge that it is not too late to act, the discourse of resistance becomes an anticipatory act. It is forward-reaching and aims to create something new as opposed to merely resisting what is there. The school strikes operate in many different countries where the school children make different demands and suggestions for steps to be taken to solve the crisis. For example, in the UK and USA with larger carbon footprints, there may be more policy facing and structural focusing on awareness. However, in countries with small carbon footprints in Africa, such as Nigeria, where impacts of climate crisis are already being felt and the elite being protected in air-conditioned buildings, student campaigners are more focused on matters such as heat inequality. School strikers are also learning through participation that those most privileged are most likely to be able to claim and exercise the rights to protest and that their own movement also struggles with various exclusionary privileges. 
In response to this process of active learning, the school strike movement increasingly centres the interconnection between racism, colonialism and the climate crisis. UK students unions have, have green impact campaigns such as CO2 Lonialism, and engagement with young people in their institutions and their outreach programmes to schools. Movements such as Zero Hour foreground systems of oppression like colonialism and capitalism causing the climate crisis and seek intersectional solutions. It is clear that alongside action, young people are taking ownership of the future historical narrative of the present while still holding open the door for politicians to act and respond to the challenges faced. Their demands while militant and carefully targeting the egos of politicians by threatening to compromise their legacy and holding them to account are presented through the language of possibility. Perhaps this democratic move will not happen soon enough. For participants, if the world does nothing, then they will rise and maybe take this possible future for themselves, and they will not be accepting excuses for those who have failed to act. The school strike movement is utopian in rejecting a capitalist model that has led to the climate crisis. The protests are a move against the kind of future young people are being offered. Narratives of cultural capital to find skill as a way to access employment, college qualifications and university degrees with a focus on salary skills and improving the UK's GDP. By striking from school, participants resist the system that commodifies them. The school strikes are an open declaration that pupils are willing to risk and to some extent reject their futures as defined by capitalism. Resisting the expected norms of school attendance and taking to the streets in protest demonstrated that students are at odds with the system that created and continues to perpetuate the climate crisis. They are indirectly criticising the capitalist system by disengaging from it, while underscoring the pointlessness of striving for education in a dying world. Here is an alternative utopian education Learning spaces, protests, marches promote the ideas. Let young people experience non-hierarchical learning. And the creation of future communities that define an equal positive future. By criticising government policy and recognising their disenfranchisement, activists become informed about political processes, making them enlightened and effective political agents. Alongside this emotive wake-up call for the planet, is a call to evaluate how democratic inadequacy has helped to uphold and reproduce inequalities that have laid the groundwork for the climate change crisis. The movement, therefore, has an ulterior horizon which aims to build the agency and recognition of the voices of children and young people. Vital to this debate is the lack of voting rights for young people, even at the age of 16 and 17, when in England one pays taxes, can get married, have a child, join the army, you cannot vote. The Votes at 16 campaign in the UK identifies 1.3 million 16 and 17 year olds as being disenfranchised. The way people come into contact with politics in their formative years is essential to the future of our democracy. The school strike movement heralds the need for a political voice and platform for a currently disenfranchised youth unable to vote or participate meaningfully in policy making, yet who are politically aware and articulate. The young people involved are demonstrating their evolving capacity for political understanding and action to support an argument for increased empowerment. They are claiming their rights. When young people cry, the oceans are rising and so are we in protests. There must be a recognition that some of the structures of this utopian move are within the system. There are laws and human rights that can be utilised and open-ended conventions that reach beyond their implementation. So what next? In the pandemic, the processes of resistance that rely on the interruption of school cease to have impact. In these times, the movement has had to find new modes of engagement in countries across the world where schools have closed down and physical protest through large gatherings is no longer an option. In a move to digital process in the pandemic, young people have been encouraged to stay indoors and strike online, and the UK student strike movement cancelled all public gatherings. This raises many questions. Does this risk dispersing what have been the day or an afternoon protest into a disconnected moment? Do these acts promote only limited visibility due to the difficulty of interrupting a saturated digital time space? What does it mean when activism becomes more about digital solidarity than physical disruption? 
there is a risk in turning away from climate activism during and after the pandemic. With economic losses hastening calls to scrap existing environmental protections and regulations. The youth protests have a vital role to play in re-emphasizing the immediacy of the climate crisis. The UK Student Climate Network has stated that they are using the time during the pandemic to build up systems and strategy, to work on campaigns and develop educational resources to return as a more potent force. Fridays for Future conducted hybrid protest actions in Germany during the digital strike for climate change on the 24th of April 2020 under the banner hashtag Fight Every Crisis. 19,000 were present for the online live stream with contributions from activists, artists and scientists. They found alternative modes of occupying physical spaces. For example, banners from 70 local groups were spread out in front of the German parliament. The movement has been continuing, mainly through virtual campaigns, however. There have been online streaming events, digital pickets and digital teachings. The movement has aligned with Black Lives Matter and continues to link colonial and capitalist oppression and violence with the climate crisis. The youth movement recognised how the emergence of COVID-19 is not a separate crisis, but intimately connected with environmental destruction that worsens inequality, particularly in the global south. The utopian temporality of this movement has actively engaged in cathedral thinking, where we begin to build not for a finished blueprint, but an imperfect greenprint of the future. The discourse from the school strike continues to draw from anxiety and fear generated by the crisis, but still contains within it a militant optimism for a better future. The school strike movement promises not to rest. It will continue to force its way into the policy-making processes that can hold us back the brink of self-destruction.